What's going on everybody? This episode we're going to talk about how to read data from MongoDB using Mongoose to use inside of our API. So a lot of words. Let's just go through an example. I'd recommend checking out the previous video, maybe a couple of the other previous videos to get some basic experience with setting up Mongoose, connecting to MongoDB, and how to create a schema. We'll do a quick, quick review in this video, but we're not going to go in a lot of detail. This video is sponsored by Filestack, which if I have not mentioned, you can get started for free. I will drop a link down below. This is one of the greatest file and image management tools. So if you have an application that's going to be working with images and you need to upload, transform, and deliver these files, you can do that very easily through Filestack. There's a lot of different things you can do, such as on the fly transformations and URL based transformations. Check them out and let's get back to the video. In the previous episode, we created this customer data inside of our database. We did this manually by defining the customer and then saying customer.save. Well, I'm actually going to remove that line right away because what's going to happen is every time we run this code, it's going to save a new customer. When you create a customer object like this, it's only temporary. It doesn't get stored in the database until you hit save. One other thing is that it saved it to this test database. If you want to change the name of this database, the default database, you can do that in your connection string. So if you head over to your .env and you scroll over in your connection string, you're going to likely see this mongodb.net and then this retry writes. Well, after the .net, but before the question mark, you can say what you want the database name to be. Here I'm going to put customers. And now, what's going to happen is I'm going to actually rerun that command we just had, which was customer.save. So we'll say customer.save. I'm going to run this code once to so make sure everything is saved and say npm run start. It's going to go through the code and eventually hit the customer.save and put it in the database. So the app is listening on port 3005. What that means is I should be able to refresh over in MongoDB. And you can see now we have a test, but we also have customers. And inside of this customers database, we have a customers collection, which has our new object. This is all based on the schema we defined in the previous video, which is currently not open. So this customer.js, this file defines that structure with the name in the industry. And then this is where you say what collection you want it to go in. Let's say we wanted to change this from customers to something like clients and we save that's going to restart the server reissue the save command and now we could actually just do a refresh over here with this refresh button instead of refreshing the whole page and now we have this clients collection notice it's plural so in this example I used clients and it created a clients collection the previous example I just had this be customer and when we do this, it's going to go inside of the customer's collection, plural. So you can see I've issued this a few times and now we have some data adding up. So it's automatically going to pluralize and lowercase that value. So that's just an important thing to know. Anywho, I'm getting a bunch of junk data in here. You can always delete these just by hitting the delete button, which doesn't take too long if you only have a few values here. And there we go, we just have one example. So now the question is, how can we read this from the database and get it to display in our application? We'll head over back to app.js, we'll remove the customer.save, and then inside of any of these endpoints, we will get the customers. Let's go ahead and use this API slash customers to get all of the customers. So basically we wanna replace this value here instead of that mock data, we wanna read it from the database. So to do this, what we're going to do is pretty much anything with MongoDB is going to be done async. So we'll say async, and then inside of the function, we can say const result is await customer with a capital C, so referring to that schema that we created, and then dot find. That's actually going to get all the data with no filter. It's just going to grab everything. And then what we can do is replace this here with result. So let's save this and give it a try. So from Postman, I'm going to go to slash API slash customers. Hit send. And here is the response, the customer's data. Ignore this V thing. It's something I think Mongoose uses that we don't have to actually do anything with. 
but the ID should match what shows up in the database. So this one ends in 6A9BC. If we head over to the database, you can see 6A9BC. So it's referring to the same object as Caleb and industry. If we had more data in this, for example, if we created a new customer here, we'll call him John, and we issued customer.save once, saving this, it refreshes the server, that code gets executed. Now when we retrieve the data, we see two customers. Additionally, you can go into the database directly and insert a document. So to do that, you go in here and you can provide the attributes and the values for those attributes as well as the data type. We'll just skip that for now since we already got some data in the database. Now we're going to remove the customer.save because we only want to do that one time whenever we want to just, you know, create a customer for testing sake. This home page this slash we're going to just change this back to some kind of welcome message welcome and another thing you might see is instead of res.send you might see res.json there's some minor differences you can research if you're interested but both of these are going to do pretty much the same thing i think in the case of sending json data it makes sense to use res.json but let's just check out, make sure everything looks the same. And yes, it does. Now, similar to how when we connected to MongoDB the first time, we had this try catch in case something went wrong, we can do something very similar here. So if you want to try to set up that structure as a test, you could try that now. Hint, it uses try. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. So we'll say try, and we will surround everything in these curly braces and then just indent these two lines and then catch. And inside of here, you can actually change what status code you send back. So for example, a common ex thing to do would say, send back status 500. And then you can pass in JSON data to return, which is usually just going to be a human readable error. So you could say error is E dot message or you could just say something went wrong if you don't want to give any details so if that was the case you could just use a string and then for the catch you're just going to need to give it a name for the error such as E so now if for any reason there's something wrong getting that data we'll get a 500 server error and send that message to the person making that request now another trick that I wanted to show you which is totally unrelated but kind of good to know is you can retrieve a list of the different collections. So Mongoose has different things you can do. So for example, mongoose.connection.db and then list collections. And you can probably find more things you can do online, but this is just one that came in handy for me at one point. So we are awaiting that value, but it's actually not going to hit until we actually make a request to this endpoint. So hitting send, now you can see a list of all the different collections in the database, which includes clients and customers. So that's just one thing you could do. You could do other things to basically get metadata about the database if you need to do things a little bit more dynamic. But I just kind of wanted to show a little sneak peek of that nothing too serious so we're just going to delete that for now so we have the ability to read a list of customers but now i want to talk about how we can write a single customer earlier on in my example we were posting this data but now i want to take this data and actually put it in the database that's what we're going to talk about in the next video if that sounds exciting to you at all then i would appreciate a like on this video and a subscription stay tuned for the next one and peace out